Well, interestingly enough, I managed to find the schematic and all the manual uh, alignment information and the like for this radio. There's the schematic there. So I'm going to take another run at this. I, I read over the instructions here and uh, I think I can do a little better job on the IF alignment. Probably not, pro probably not to gain much, but I am going to follow this procedure just a little closer here. And uh, then with this, I have a chance to align the antenna circuit and a couple other things. Most importantly, the uh, band at the top here. Uh, this has some pretty interesting instructions on how to do that and how to do it out of the cabinet. Because this is one of those radios that when you take it out of the cabinet, the dial numbers are gone. They're, they're back on the piece of glass on the cabinet. So uh, it, it, some radio, it, different radios get around that in different ways, so you can do this bench work. And there's a note in here too, which is kind of interesting. It says, uh, care should be taken to have no iron or other metal near, near the loop, near the loop antenna. Do not make this setup on a metal bench. Well, guess what? Yeah, believe it or not, I have a metal bench here. <laughs> So maybe I'll lift the radio up a few inches just to get it, get it clear here. There have been a few times where this metal bench has had an influence on the radio I'm working on. Uh, the one that uh, comes to mind is the introduction of a hum or something like that. So, uh, so I think we can do a little better job on this. I'm still worried about this point. Oh my gosh. Boy, I just don't think there's much holding that on, that's for sure. So. Uh, this is the biggest issue for me, <laughs> is fixing this. Everything else I know I can handle, but I'm still unsure about what I should do about this, this weakness. So, so that's what we're going to set up and uh, set up for. Okay, so to do the IF alignment, I really should be feeding the output of my signal generator into the first detector tube, which is a 12SA7. The 12SA7 is this guy right here in the middle. And I've got to So that's the 12SA7 right there. So I've got to identify the grid. The grid can't read the my printout whoops very accurately so let me look it up in my book here 12 12 sa7 12 12 sa7 pentagrid converter da, 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 12 sa7 gt that any different? There is an internal connection. There are some differences here, but maybe the grid is not any different. Let's see. The grid on this one is five. That's five. So it's pin five. Pin five. I just have to attach a clip lead to pin five of the 12 SA7. Looking for the key. So it's one. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's it. One, two, three, four, five. So pin five appears to be that guy right there. Yeah. Just worried about introducing a short, but I don't have to worry about that. Actually, I can clip it here in an even better spot. So there's our connection. So that's the grid of the detector tube. Always a much better place to uh, push in the uh, IF signal when you're doing an IF alignment. Now they're suggesting I stick a capacitor in here too. 0.05 or 0.1. So we'll be 
feeding my signal generator into here. And like I said before, chances are all that's going to happen is we're going to find out I aligned it pretty good the first time. And we still have these wax capacitors sitting in here. Um, which I'm still thinking about changing out. If, there's any, if I come across any reason that I think it, it might be wise to do necessary to do. Um, so that's it. We'll, uh, we'll go from here now. Okay, another suggestion in the uh, information here is to not use the chassis, but to use the ground bus. And I can identify the ground bus by looking at the negative wire from the main filter capacitor. And also verify by tracing through a little bit that it does match diagram, so I'm going to go on there. I don't want this popping off while I'm working on the radio. There we go. Okay. I even have a little block of wood here to get the radio just a little off the metal bench. Yeah, a little bit is going to help, I'm pretty sure. Okay. I'll just connect this up to the signal generator, ground, and I'll just make the connection down here kind of out of sight. signal side of the signal generator. It's not working out. Clip lead. Okay. So now I've got the signal generator connected to the ground bus and the radio and also to the grid of the uh, detector tube. I turned down the signal strength way down here on my signal generator. That's this control here. And this one here. And we're set at five. We're set off the 455 right now. I think we're ready to start here. This is only a double check of the IF, not much more. At least that's what I think I'm doing. Okay, the radio is plugged in. And I'm using an isolation transformer to supply the power to the uh, radio I'm working on, so I'm not too worried about cross grounding or uh, those kinds of problems with the hot chassis, because th this radio would normally have a live chassis look closer at the schematic um, it may be isolated by a capacitor but I won't worry about that right now okay so I think we can switch it on and uh, see how it goes from there just fixing my microphone volumes here which, you know, if I keep bumping my leg against the volume control I don't think so don't know Okay, so pretty sure you can hear me though. Let's apply some power. Right now the radio is switched on with the volume low. Now I just tip this up a bit. You'll get a look at the light bulbs here. There we go, should come on bright. There it is. And dull down fairly quickly. That's just great. See that bulb has disappeared. Uh, there's a tiny bit of red left in it, but I'm not going to see that with the camera. But it should start brightening up again as soon as the uh, tubes begin to conduct. Okay, here we go. You can watch this meter over here and see it dropping. I can see the light starting to glow again. So those are all indications everything's going just fine. Now let's turn it up here over here. 
it's silent again. Interesting. Okay, so here's my chance to figure out what's going on with that intermittent, because obviously it wasn't any of the capacitors I replaced. Okay, I need to get my banger ready here. Or tapper. Yeah, I'll start with a tapper before I start a banger on it. Well, I only got as far as this tube here. I mean, this thing would be an incredible hair trigger at that moment before it turns on on its own. But I think it is that that tube. So we are back in business. Let's turn it down, and uh, we'll dial this down to 455 and. The radio should show up. Let's see. Anybody want to try to explain that? What happened? Okay. Why did nothing happen there? Not enough signal, maybe. There's quite a bit of signal now. Hey. That's pretty disappointing. What's going on here? I'm sure everything's connected properly. Okay, let's give it a blast of signal here. a lot of signal. Yeah, that's a spot where there's not much radio reception. I haven't tried shorting the antenna or anything. Okay, let's get our meter going. I'll just tune past and we'll watch. What I'm doing is I'm just watching the meter and I'm going to set it for maximum here. Right around there. <laughs> it's 455 right on. So I'm going to give a quick check here. Again, watching the meter. This, the first screw here is really tough to turn. exactly on. These are all going to be exactly on. It doesn't particularly matter how you get the IF signal to come through the radio. That one's... Ooh! 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 Check that out. That one, that one was off. Okay, take back everything I said. That's great. Got a little more sensitivity out of it. Okay. So that's the IF now done properly according to the to the alignment sheet. Very good. Now what's left is to make sure that the dial is accurate and also to peak, I imagine to peak up the antenna alignment, the antenna uh, resonance if I can put it that way. That's great. Looking forward to doing that.